In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option, coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. If you like our work, would you please hit the subscribe button at no cost or commitment. Um, if you have a few quid to spare, you can consider using Patreon or PayPal. If you want to make a comment, you'd be most welcome to do so in the comment section. Constructive comment, and please keep us in your prayers. I want to address an issue that's topical, but the issue itself is far, far uh, more interesting and more important uh, than, uh, let's say, might be implied by a very brief topical uh, treatment or row. At the moment, there's a fair bit of discussion going on in, in all circles uh, within the Catholic Church. Let's say, you know what I mean, uh, traditional, conservative, uh, uh, in, 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 in all circles, uh, a, a, a discussion going on concerning the Pope's alleged willingness to countenance the blessing of same-sex unions in, in certain circumstances, or at least to permit priests on the ground some discretion in doing so. Now, I, I read what the Pope said, and I must say I thought he covered the ground uh, ex extremely well for the most part. I did think, all right, that a door had been left very slightly open, you can feel just the slightest draft. Personally, I I don't know, I don't like, but I'm not the Pope. I do think we need to talk about this, and I wish we didn't, because invariably uh, any priest that attempts to preach on this gets the head taken off him by one side or the other. But I do need to uh, have a bit of integrity here and tack into the wind and do my job, so please bear with me, uh, because I was ordained to preach the gospel, to offer sacrifice and preach the gospel, and uh, I've said Mass already today, so now I really should deal with the second. The Church is not conducting some sort of ongoing, sly, concealed pogrom against Catholics who are attracted to their own sex. That is not what we're doing. It's not what we're about. I will admit that in the past, even the recent past, we allowed ourselves to speak with the same voice as the culture. And the culture at the time was hostile and even coarse, coarsely humorous with regard to homo homosexual relationships. And it, it suited us well enough in some ways, shamefully, to go along with that. Now that's very much coming back on us, and in some way rightly, in some ways rightly, because we had the gospel and we should have stuck to it without any help or backing from anybody. Now society views things quite differently and sees no, no problem with these things. Indeed, they're to be commended. We don't agree. The church venerates the sexual attraction consummated in the sexual act between two people, one of whom is a man and the other of whom is a woman, of sufficient age who have engaged in the holy sacrament of marriage or who have, if they're not Catholics, otherwise validly contracted marriage, which is of the natural law, and which, and, and which act must always be open to children. Any other sexual act of any kind, whether heterosexual or homosexual or autoerotic, by which I refer to masturbation and the like, all of them are sinful. None are permissible. It's as simple as that, and it's as horribly complicated as that. Simple in that it's clear. Horribly complicated in that people are horribly complicated. And so putting that into action depending on the various attractions that people feel, which for the majority of people is heterosexual. Depending on the various attractions that people may feel is very, very difficult at times and very complicated. Now, I'm just going to say that to you straight out. So when, when Pope Benedict often gets slated for having referred to homosexual acts as disordered, any sexual act which is not ordered towards the procreation of children is disordered. Right, we get that clear. Any sexual act which does not occur between man and woman, a man, a woman, two people, one a man, one a woman, ordered towards the future, order containing within itself the, 
the possibility of the future, of propagation, of, 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 of uh, reproduction, of descendants, of issue, it is disordered. It does not have the proper end in view and the act is disordered. If the couple are heterosexual and not married, it is disordered. It is, it is disordered. If it is a rape, it is disordered. It is profoundly disordered. The act of masturbation is disordered. A, homosexual, a heterosexual act between two people, a man and a woman, even if they are married, using contraception, is disordered. So this isn't some pogrom against homosexual people. It's just pointing out that those acts fit into that category. I, I, I would respectfully, I realise it's very difficult for people to listen to, okay? But I would ask for a hearing here. Because I would respectfully point out to you that there's a whole philosophy and theology of life implied in this. And it's not some church obsession. The sexual, the sexual issue is crucial. Hence, the general fascination around it, which isn't the creation of the church. In considering it as being central, the church merely follows nature and the revealed will of God. Now you can say back, you are condemning homosexual people to a lifetime of celibacy they did not choose. Uh, okay, I'll say two things here. You're not going to like either of them. Number one, somebody chose it for you. Higher than all of us. However that happened, it's at least through his permissive will. That's the first thing. The second thing is I'm not condemning, and it's not a condemnation, by the way, it's not a sentence. I'm celibate and I chose it. It's not a sentence. I'm not condemning you to involuntary celibacy because there is nothing preventing a man who is a, or a woman who has attractions to their own sex marrying the opposite sex and having children provided that they can consummate the, sex, the, the marriage in a sexual act and provided that they can be faithful. Now, I know nobody wants to hear that now, even though everybody knows that this has happened and often happened in the past. Right? We all know this. I can't give you figures, but we all know this. I don't think anyone can give you figures. But any other sexual act is not permitted. Now, I accept that that's very difficult. And I can't think of a way that you can do that successfully without sin. I cannot think of, of the way in which a human being can live their sexuality without, without occasionally uh, some sin. I'm not justifying the sin. Okay, I'm not justifying. I'm not justifying any of it. I'm just saying I accept how difficult the ground is to fight on. I totally accept it. I'm not judging you. I'm begging you not to give up. That's all. We're not judging you. That's, has it ever occurred to you that that's what we have conf, 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 confessions for? That didn't occur to you. Because if you're on a battlefield and you see a field hospital, that's there because people are going to get hurt when this starts. That's why that's there. If you see a confessional box in a church, why is that there? That's there because people are going to make a royal pig's breakfast out of this. That's why that's there. So a homosexual man, homosexual woman, let's say, God forbid, they lose their resolve, they're overcome by temptation, whatever it is, they commit an act. They do like every other poor devil. They do like every other poor devil who has to try to follow the Lord. You go to confession. Yeah? You go through the humiliating, difficult, but life-giving and salvific experience of confessing the sin and appearing before God and the priest as witness, broken and vulnerable. You receive the blessed absolution, forgiveness, and you let it wash down over your head and, and stain the collar of your robes like the oil that anointed Aaron as high priest. Forgiveness. Eh? Grace. And then you start again. Do the penance. And the penance, most priests are decent about the penance, to be honest. Okay. The penance would be very doable. Do the penance. 
and start again. The penance is the start, by the way. You're starting again with the penance. You see, I, this the huge problem here isn't homosexual people. The problem isn't heterosexual people. The problem isn't... Uh, the, the problem isn't incels or all these problems that we have now that are centred around sexuality. The problem is posh people. The problem is that so many of you don't want to get dirty in, F in spiritual effort. Yeah, you're proud. Well, let me tell you something. And I'm telling you nothing that a, farm, that a really brilliant man hasn't told everyone for the last few years, Jordan Peterson. Life is suffering. And life has a tragic quality that is only resolved by Jesus Christ. And if Christ didn't die for us and rise again, it is not resolved. Because the tragedy is there. We are a broken, death-bound people without him. Yeah? If you insist on being this sort of Marvel comic c character all the time, life will pass you by and you'll end up having to live life laboriously in, in, in purgatory for your purification when that could have been avoided. Or worse. And you don't even want to think about that, okay? No, no, no. I'm saying to you here now, don't give up. Don't be too proud about this. Join with us. I say to homosexual Catholics, f forgive the majority of Catholics in the past for their disregard, for their contempt, for their impatience. Forgive them. Stick with Christ. Join us, brothers and sisters. And let's make a royal mess of this together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.